All right, UFC 169 prediction times. Haven't gotten, didn't get to you on the last card. Uh, a couple of reasons. One, just wasn't really interested. Um, two, uh, wasn't feeling very well. Still not feeling very well, but uh, push through. Um, and three, uh, I didn't have the Logitech uh, software on my computer because my hard drive died. And I've been reinstalling everything kind of as I feel a burning need to. Um, <laughs> but anyways, let's look at the card. Uh, main card, really, really nice. Undercard, really, really underwhelming, which is disappointing because, you know, usually the Super Bowl card has like a good undercard, a good up main card and everything. But this one really, really, really top heavy. I mean, a really interesting main card, but the... the, the Lower card is lacking in largely anything that you would want. Like, it's lacking in star power, and it's lacking in interesting fights. Um, either way, uh, actually, before I get to the picks, just a thought on the quick TRT and drug thing that's coming out. I mean, A, if anyone ever thought that, you know, hypogonadism was going to be like this thing that just randomly affected you even though you've been like this muscle bound athlete all your life and that one of the following things had not happened one you took steroids and compromised your own testosterone production in which case you did it to yourself two you've been hitting the head enough that your brain wasn't sending the right signals to produce testosterone and the result of which you probably shouldn't have been fighting Three, you've gotten old, and last I checked, that's when you retire. So, sorry to guys like Dan Henderson and Frank Muir and everything. I'm not still big fans of you, but, I mean, in the end, if you can't fight without the TRT, you shouldn't be fighting. It's, it's like, I mean, we, apparently we can't smoke weed and fight, even though that's not even a PD, but, you know, we can, we can just, we can put uh, synthetic testosterone in our bodies. Uh, to fix what we have probably done to ourselves. In the case of Vitor Belfort, that's definitely the case. So, there's my thoughts on that. As for drug testing, the UFC needs to stop bullshitting. Yes, it's extremely costly if they were to have to handle all the drug testing on their own. But in the end, you are a private company. You can do whatever you want, basically, to your employees in this regard, as long as you give notice. So you simply say, if you're on TRT, yeah, the State Athletic Commission can get, can get you... Uh, um, an exemption, but we don't accept it. You can't take it, and you won't find our card, and people won't fight. And there's no other game in town, so eventually, you know, it would, it would take its toll. People aren't going to say, uh, no, because then they're just retiring for fighting. Which in some cases, they probably should. But moving on. Um, okay, preliminary card on a fight pass. Literally, just going to go over this because I'm not going to watch any fights. Neil Magny will probably win by decision. Rashid Magomedov, decision, Clint Hester, TKO. There's my call. Although Andy Edge is a tough guy. He was the guy that fought Uriah Faber on tough. Um, still, Hester should get this done. Um, preliminary card, uh, undercard on Fox Sports. Al Iaquinta versus Kevin Lee. Kevin Lee has this bizarre hype train following him for a guy who I haven't really, I, I, haven't, I have no footage of. Um, if you got that, throw it down there, but, but too late to make the pick. Um, I went to buy at worst decision. Um, Nick Catone, Tom Watson. Interesting fight, but I honestly thought Nick Catone was probably cut at this point. Um, he didn't look good at welterweight against TJ Wahlberger. They're coming up to 185, probably a good idea. Um, still, I mean, we do have a D1 wrestler here. Tom Kong Watson's problems have historically been wrestlers. Uh, but at the same time, he did stuff a couple of Brad Tavares takedowns. He did, in the end, win against Stanislav Nedkov, um, another takedown guy. Not necessarily a wrestler, but um, a guy who employs the takedowns. I'm going to have to go with Tom Watson. I've never been all that impressed with Uh Technically very good wrestler, but the ground game needs work. Stand-up really needs work. And it doesn't seem like an explosive... Wow, I'm on my back kind of uh, wrestling. Um, just seems like the kind of guy who, who should be technically proficient. But um, that Wahlberger fight really soured me on him. Watson by TKO. 
Um, Alan Patrick, John Medesi, uh, pardon me, uh, Chris Carriasso, Danny Martinez, going with Chris Carriasso, never been all that impressed with Danny Martinez. Um, good to see him getting a shot, definitely not one of those guys who came out of left field, but carriasso has been, outside of against the, the cream of the division, looking, you know, reasonable, I mean, kind of boring, but, I mean, yeah, he lost to Jusier Formiga and, uh, John Moraga, but Moraga thought for the title, Formiga's at one point the best 125 in the world. Uh, coming off a win against the larger Santos, this guy's got wins over Vaughn Lee, Will Capozano, Rafael Robello, uh, Robello. Um, did lose to Henna Burrell, no shame there. Did lose to Michael McDonald, no shame there. Has a win over Takei Mizugaki in a fight that I'm pretty sure a lot of people agree with me, Mizugaki probably won. But in fairness, Mizugaki's got some decisions to go his way that shouldn't have gone his way, so there you go. Um, yeah, no, Kerry also should just be too much for Danny Martinez. Uh, John McDessey, Alan Patrick. Interesting fight, but I just don't think that Alan Patrick has really been tested in the fire enough for me to pick him. Um, he's an interesting fighter. He looked good in his debut against, I believe, it was Garrett Whiteley. Um, but I think McDessey really sees the guy just that much better. I mean, McDessey's hard to take down for a non stud wrestler at 155. And there's not a lot of guys who I think are going to strike him. So, yeah, I got to go with John McDessey. Um, Probably a decision. I think Alan Patrick will make it to 15 rounds. McDessey hasn't shown the most amazing finishing power. I mean, yeah, to take out Randy Forte, but I mean, Derek Crookshank, Sam Stout made the distance with him. Pat Autumn would make the distance with him. Pat Autumn was not a good fighter. Um, yeah, the only guy who's outstruck him is Anthony Nojaquani. Anthony Nojaquani, really, really good striker that I think Alan Patrick just isn't really on the level. Um, so that's the undercard. On to Jamie Varner, Abel Trujillo. Been thinking about this one, and admittedly some of the hater rave might be coming out here. I don't like Abel Trujillo. He seems like a really not nice person. Which you're going to get in the fight game, and that doesn't matter. But we're talking like towards women and shit, which is not really not cool. Um, also, I do honestly believe Varner has the tools. I mean, when I look at Abel Trujillo's fight history... Yeah, his only losses to Khabib or Magomedov since coming to the UFC, but I mean, he beat Marcus Levesser, who I don't think belonged in the UFC, and he beat Roger Valley, who I don't think belongs in the UFC. So, there's kind of that. Um, I do believe Varner probably has a defensive wrestling to stuff some takedowns, and he's, I think he's definitely better on the feet. Although Trujillo is fast and explosive, is technically he seems lacking on the feet. Uh, and I think Varner can take advantage of that, because Varner is also fast and explosive, but he's also technically very sound. So I'm taking Varner probably by unanimous decision. trivial has got a good chin. Um, wouldn't surprise me if we got a finish here. But uh, I, I do believe that when you look at some of the guys Varner's beaten, there's a lot better than Trujillo. I think if you look at Trujillo's record, there's no one that matches Varner. So there's that. Uh, John Lineker, Ali Bagatinoff. Uh, hopefully Lineker will make weight. Um, if John Lineker does not make weight, the UFC has to either cut him or force him to 135 because I'm not really sure how you could justify keeping a guy fighting at 125 who has missed weight in what would be three consecutive bouts in three of his last six. Yeah, no, that, that would be ridiculous. Um, taking Ali Bagatine off, uh, from when Lineker gets pressured... His, his he flusters a little bit. Um, we saw it in some of the fights that he won. Um, thinking good examples here. The Jose Maria fight uh, was a decent example of that. You also had it at, at a few points in the Urshatani fight, but Urshatani's just not built to be kind of maintain that level of um, coming at you. And even Alondre Santos in his jungle fight, uh, his last jungle fight fight before the UFC showed a little bit of you know. The secret to beating John Lineker. Um, he does have really good knockout power. He's really fast, really explosive. Uh, ground game is for a Brazilian bad, but um, not bad overall. Uh, but I mean, Bagatinov, I think, has the ability to mix in some wrestling if he needs to. He is definitely a guy who comes forward. Uh, he could deal with Tim Elliott's speed. Tim Elliott, I think, is faster, although not nearly as powerful as Lineker. Um, yeah, no, I, I got to take back a team off. I just think that, you know, if you can press it, if you can fluster Lineker, he'll have a great deal of success. He'll be able to land some power shots, be able to mix in a couple takedowns. Just a really interesting prospect at 125. Um, a lot of that coming out of Russia these days, stunningly enough. Um, Alistair Overeem, Frank Mir taking Overeem. 
Um, the reason being is that Overeem, even when he has lost, has looked pretty decent, if you think about it. Um, looking at the Travis Brown and Antonio Silva fights, you know, obviously winning the Antonio Silva fight until he started to play with him. Can't do that. Um, looked pretty good against Travis Brown until uh, getting, you know, <laughs> finished, basically. Um, and Travis Brown does look like a very legitimate fighter after beating Josh Barnett. Um, yeah, uh, that's what it boils down to. I mean, the difference is that Frank Mir has not looked good. I mean, there's two guys on losing streaks. Differences over in various points in his fights was actually winning, whereas with Frank Mir, fought JDS. Uh, no shame in the performance, to be honest, but, I mean, got beat up. Uh, fought Daniel Cormier, pretty snooze best. Josh Barnett finished him under two minutes. Um, that's all I really can say on the matter. Um, taking over him via TKO here. Um, I think that Mir's time has... I think that Mir is at the point of his career where I think... And stunningly, it's taking this long that his body is starting to just not be up to the task anymore. Which, when you consider this is a man who, you know, got hit while he was riding his motorcycle, had to lose, lose the title at that point. I mean, we're, it, it's pretty impressive it's taken this long. Whereas, I think with Overeem, um, I'm not going to say I condone PED use here, but as long as you can get away with it, Overeem probably can do reasonably well. Um, I, still, I, I, we, we'd like a clean sport, but to ignore that it happens is um, kind of silly. Um, moving on, Jose Aldo, Ricardo Lamas. I really like Ricardo Lamas as a fighter. I remember seeing him fight Bart Palaszewski and being like, that is, that was awesome. I mean, if, if you've never seen the Bart Palaszewski, Ricardo Lamas fight, WC39, go find it because that's really good. Um, you know, yeah, setbacks against Danny Castillo and Yuri Alcatora suggested maybe a little bit of a chin problem, but, uh, you know, the Matt Grice fight, really exciting. Cub Swanson, really exciting fight. Hatsuyoki, yeah, pretty good fight. Eric Koch, impressive win. Um, that being said, I, I, I cannot talk myself into thinking that he really has any chance in this fight. Um, Jose Aldo is the only person who can stop Jose Aldo at 145. And that's because Aldo is having a hard time making the weight. If he really has a hard time making the weight, maybe that opens the door for Lamas. But in the end, you have a guy here who I think can stuff Lamas to state down. So I know can outstrike Lamas. And I know can knock Lamas out. So, knockout. Um, Hennon Barrow, Uriah Faber. This goes all five rounds and looks reasonably like the last fight. Um, closer, though, I think, because, I mean, we do have that whole Bang Ludwig transformation of alpha male thing. Um, the only thing is that I think the limitations of, of Faber striking was never technique or uh, anything a coach can necessarily fix. But the fact that, I mean, this hand and this hand have been broken several times in fights. And, I mean, if he starts to break his hands again, um, he's pretty much done. Um, I just don't think he can outgrapple Burrell. I mean, that's that's the key weapon. Is I mean, people talk about Faber's power, or Faber's improving striking. It, it doesn't matter if you have glass hands, which Faber does. Um, I think that in the end, he's got to find a way to get this to ground and get a submission. And I don't think he can in terms of the submission part. <laughs> Burrell is amazing on the ground, amazing on the feet. Just a scary dude at 135. Um... And it's a tad bit disappointing that I mean he's coming up at a time when the the neck the other two big names at the weight are, are Dominic Cruz and Uriah Faber, who both have injury problems. Faber in the terms of his hands and how that affects an actual fight, and Cruz's knee, groin, hamstring, anything below the waist, basically getting in the way of actually having the fight even happen. Um, yeah. Um, Still, you know what? I, I was one who did not mind the first fight. I thought it had exciting moments, and I think this one will also have exciting moments, and it will be a competitive fight. But I just, it, it's like so many other uh, rematches. When it gets right down to it, you don't really get the feeling that you're going to get a different winner than we got last time. Um, so, yeah. Uh, and Bravo, you know, it's true. Um, like I said, a really interesting main card, like some really, really relevant fights when you think that, yeah, Overeem and Mir on losing streaks, but a win here for either of them would put them 
largely right back in the picture. I mean, heavyweight's not the deepest division in the world. Um, got a title, got two title fights that uh, obviously have interest. Uh, Lineker Bagatinov, I think, is, goes a long way to solidifying one of those guys probably is the next flyweight contender. And uh, Varner versus uh, Trujillo would just be a good fight. But the undercard, not impressed. But people really tune in for the main card, and that's what they want. That's where the pay-per-view money comes in. Anyways, that is all. Hope you enjoy the card.